That, my friends, is what it looks like when you have a blown head gasket. We've got uh, some gases blowing back through the radiator. This is the uh, Xterra that I picked up for $400. And guess what we're going to start tonight? Yeah. We're going to replace the head gaskets. All right, so we got her shut off now. Long story short, if you watched some of my videos about a couple of weeks ago, you saw where I picked up this 2002 Xterra. Has about 200,000 miles on it. It runs fine, but it overheats and it's got a blown head gasket. Very typical. And we're going to start tearing this apart tonight. I know there's a lot of videos online about this, but I'm going to do it uh, my way and let you know and show you, hopefully, that it's not all that bad. But there are some great deals out there, especially on Facebook Marketplace. You can pick up stuff like this with a little know-how and some tools, and you can have yourself a fine running automobile. All right, now a couple of quick things here. Uh, I've gone ahead and already ordered a uh, brand new head gasket set, and here it is. Picked it up for about $70 online. You got all the head bolts that came with it. You got gaskets here that I have not opened yet, and also, I did go ahead and order a knock sensor because I do have a code for a knock sensor, and you probably saw that in the video uh, not, for, not too far back. Pick this up, but we're actually going to bolt this or fix it up here somewhere on top of the engine where you can actually get to it because this knock sensor is actually way down under the in intake plenum there, and you basically have to take the whole top part of the engine off, just like Ford did on the 4.6s. Knock sensors are way down there, so uh, we're just going to kind of bolt this up here. That way, if it ever breaks, we'll have easy access to it. And also, we have our other gaskets here, which we'll tear into a little bit later. But like I said, I got all this for about, uh, I think if you include taxes, probably about $80. So, um, just go online and Google your engine. This is a 3.3. Now, the 3.3... The 3.3 that has the uh, supercharger right here, it's a little bit different. I think the head gaskets are pretty much the same, but the external parts, some of these smaller gaskets that go around the uh, turbine and everything and top of the plant might be a little bit different. So do some research, just make sure your VIN number, if you see your VIN number, get those numbers there and make sure they match up when you go to buy these parts. And like I said, I bought these on eBay. You can probably buy them just about anywhere online, but I find that eBay with a lot of dealers on there, it's really easy to search and find out, uh, compare price-wise what you want to spend and all that. So it makes it a lot easier to buy stuff. Okay, and the other thing here is I have this uh, tool set right here. This is a metric hex bit socket set. I picked this up for like $9. Now here is my old set. Uh, it's pretty much standard. Uh, you can see the half inch. I didn't have any metric. Now, some of these bolts on this uh, Nissan uh, give a lot of people trouble because they don't use the right tools. Now, for instance, on the intake bolts here, on this top plenum here, you see that bolt there? Well, we got a bunch here that goes through the back. A lot of people put the wrong size in here. And when they do, they end up stripping this out and uh, they have to take a drill bit and they drill this out. Then they're behind two weeks because they have to go out and order bolts and all that. Make sure you have the right one. Now my Nissan here is a six millimeter and you can see it fits in there nice and snug. And if you have any rust, dirt in there, blow it out, take something and clean it out, spray a little PV blaster in there. Make sure your tool sits in there nice and snug. And you can see I can turn this back and forth and it does not move whatsoever. The mistake a lot of people make is they'll grab something that almost fits, not quite. And I almost made this mistake. You see this one here, I'm thinking, oh, this will work. Well, actually, that's a little too big. Um, the problem is I don't have the correct uh, size here that I need for all these. You know, this one here, and you can see how it fits down in there, but look. See, it's kind of wobbly. And you might think, oh, it'll break loose, but no, don't even try it. You'll be sorry. Trust me. Make sure you get the right one. And this one here that I'm using, uh, for instance, is a 730 seconds. So uh, this is not even the right tool. So that is one quick thing. And the other thing is, on the head bolts, pull one of the head bolts out. Of course, it'll be a while before we get down to the head bolts. The same thing here, make sure you have the right tool. And you can see here, this one takes a 10 millimeter. And if I can hold the camera and kind of get this at an angle for you guys, you can see that this fits on here nice and snug. It is nice and tight. 
I should be able to get my head bolts out. So just so you know, um, this here causes a lot of people problems trying to get this up or plant them off. And the other thing is you can also take something like a uh, rat, uh, an extension or something, and before you get ready to knock these out, you can tap on these bolts a little bit with a small hammer, just kind of tap, and it might break them free a little bit. But we'll see. I'm hoping I'll get all mine out and they're all the way back to there. So having said that, I guess we'll go ahead and start tearing into this and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, first thing I did, I uh, got the battery out of the way because what I want to do is take this water bottle, coolant bottle off here. Uh, you don't have to, but I do have to pull the radiator. I want to pull the radiator anyway. I mean, you, you could probably do this without, but I just like my room. Set this off to the side. These are just little 10 millimeter bolts that hold this on. Everything so far has been 10 millimeter, which is nice. Now over here, I've gone ahead and loosened up the air cleaner. Now someone has worked on this before. You can see the job, hatchet job there they did with that bolt and the nut when it's supposed to be just a little screw, but what are you gonna do? I unhook all these hoses from the uh, air duct here down to the pipes, so that way they can stay to attached and you'll know where they go when you take it apart. You got a sensor here unhook this you got two here now I've already gone ahead and taken probably 50 pictures with my little cell phone here uh, I advise you to do that as you're working along trust me you'll thank me later it will save you a lot of time and we're ready to go ahead and pull this off this is pretty simple Get this off here and uh, off this comes and look someone looks like someone uh, fixed the air cleaner uh, put a new one in and there it is and also, your mass airflow sensor is right there, so uh, kind of be careful with this. Put this off to the side. And there's our air cleaner, so it looks like, well, yeah, well that's kind of nice. And I don't know if I'd said this earlier, but I wasn't even going to do this video on this, but I thought, eh, if I help two people out, hopefully uh, I can do that. So we'll set this off to the side. Now, when I tuck these hoses off, there's a little thing right here that I kind of caught my eye on. Look, what is this? It's like a wire. I don't know if that, see that right there? I'm not sure why that's even there. So let's pull this out of here and see what the heck. Oh, well, it's something that someone stuck in there. So maybe Nissan put that there for a reason. Wow. I don't, can you see that? It looks like a wire brush, some kind of a wire filter they used in this. I'll be daggone. Interesting. <laughs> so I guess I'll just leave it there. But it, it's actually in there pretty good. I don't know if you can see this or not, but... It won't even come out. All right, well, we'll deal with this later, but that's probably there for a reason. Now, I did break this clamp here. It's rusted. Uh, that's why we have parts stores. You can buy these uh, fairly cheap, so we'll replace it. Now, when I first got the vehicle, it's been sitting for about two weeks. I oiled up all the bolts and nuts. It really makes things uh, break loose a lot easier so you don't break things. These Nissans are famous for twisting little bolts off and so forth. And... Um, if you're going to do this, just kind of make sure you put some penetrating oil on all these clamps and stuff. It will help you quite a bit. All right, so there's really no right or wrong way to take this stuff apart. For instance, you just got to take your time. And here's a perfect example. You see those two there? This is the thermostat temperature and the gauge. This little one right here where my finger is, that is very little. So be very careful with that. This part here it would probably be $20 or $30. So I'd pay to take a little time to take, unhook these little things here. This is what I'm going to do next. But everything else looks like it's going to be straightforward. Like I said, you can do it any way you want, but the point is to get down to the head so we can take it off. And the only other thing I'm really worried about is those manifold uh, uh, gaskets. There's two bolts on this side, I believe, and three on the other side. Uh, I'm probably going to pull the head off with the manifold because there's no way I'm going to get all those bolts out, I don't think. And I think it would just be easier because I can replace them later. But we'll get into that hopefully a little bit later. All right, on top of the plenum here, go ahead and just take these two bolts out for your throttle cable. Trust me, this is a lot easier. Just put the bolts back in here and we'll move this out of the way real quick. There's one and here is two. So just kind of, like I said, set this back out of the way somewhere, maybe up there. And once again, like I said earlier, I'm fighting with clamps. A lot of these just break off. So I'll probably go to Harbor Freight and buy a box of these just so I'll have them. These are, I think, uh, maybe a half inch. But while you're there, just go ahead and start disconnecting the hoses. And we've got a few. We've got one here. This is why we take pictures so we know everything's going back. Here's the EGR tube. Pulled this back out of the way. Got one up here. This is probably for the brake booster. It is for the brake booster. Kind of push it back something like that. And now we're ready to go ahead and unhook these spark plug wires. 
Uh, good news is, uh, I like how Nissan did this. They actually have it where you can disconnect this whole wiring harness and just kind of pull it all the way. That's what I did here. Got all the little things unhooked. This right here took a little while. Uh, this little tiny sensor we were just talking about a little while ago, I pulled on this and I finally got it off. It just pulls off, but you have to kind of pull on it kind of hard, kind of tug it. And this one here, you see that clip? It actually sits like this. You actually have to get your finger up under there or get something kind of squeeze at and gently pull that off. But I did say that. I tried to put a wrench there and turn this so I could spin it around because I thought there was a, a little tab there you push on this little one here, but there is not. It just, just pulls off. So be careful with that little one. I believe this is the temperature gauge. So we'll go ahead and pull this back. We've got the wires unhooked. I just unhooked the wires from the distributor right here. And uh, we just kind of pull all this back. Now uh, you have a fuel line here, high pressure and low pressure fuel line. I don't know if you can see this or not, but the bolts are right there. I disconnected those two. They're little 10 millimeters. There that is. Make sure there's no pressure on your hoses. I just kind of put this out of the way because this wiring harness will go back just like this completely out of the way, which is kind of nice. And there we go. So I got this big hose here to unhook. Then we can set all of this completely out of the way. And we're actually getting down here to the nitty gritty. I think the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and pull this plenum off here real quick. That shouldn't take too long. So like I said, take lots of pictures as you're moving along and this will really help you out when you go to put it back together. I think what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and loosen up these six bolts that I was telling you about earlier that are very important. We've got to get these loose. Once we get them loose, we'll be in good shape. So I think there is one, two, three, four, five. I think that's about, there's only five. So let's go ahead and see if I can get those out. All right, just like that, we got all five of them out. So that was a big relief. We don't have to worry about anything. And this thing's already loose. You can see I can move it around. So this is really exciting. So just remember folks, make sure you use the right size for this. And it's a six millimeter, so. All right, you can see our manifold is loose. All we gotta do now is go ahead and hook a hose back here. And this one's kind of hard to get to, so we're gonna try to Unhook this hose right about there where my finger is, back with that little clamp. Uh, once we get that, this will be good to go, but you can probably see it as I move it there, the hose that we got unhooked right there. It's kind of short, kind of hard to get into there, but once we get that unhooked, this thing should come off. And disregard what I said earlier about this hose and this little wire here, uh, this all comes off as one piece right there. So I was thinking of the other 3-3 three, three I worked on the other day. All right, so let's go ahead and get this out. All right, so after several attempts trying to get in there using these guys, using snip nose, I just could not get any room. So once I took my big old screwdriver, started prying one of this in here off, I did get the upper end uh, clamp right there. I don't know if you can even see it. There's a clamp right there. But anyway, I got it off, but I couldn't get the hose off right here. So I just end up cutting it, so I'll replace it, no big deal. So you might have to do the same thing, just so you know. And now our plenum is pretty much ready to come out. All right, let's go ahead and pull it out of here. Now I did slip the uh, gasket out. The gasket's good, but I'm not gonna reuse it because I have gasket in my tool, my new uh, set there. All right, let's go ahead and pull this up and it should come right out. There it is. Now you have a couple of smaller hoses under here that we have to disconnect. Get this up a little higher. 
All right, so after some wrestling around, getting my hands back in here and uh, actually unhooking another wire, I mean, this is what you're gonna have to do. You've got to lift it up, get your hands back in here, do the best you can, you got a plug here. It's hidden, you got one on the other side, but I'll go ahead and pull this out now. And there we go. And we'll flip this over, give you a look at it here real quick. All right, so there's a look at it upside down. Now, before we look at that real quick, here's the issue I had. Here's the hose that I had to cut. That just goes right there. It's a little short hose that goes doo -doo -doo -doo, right here, right there. The other thing is there's a small hose here, a vacuum line for your fuel regulator. You got to pop this off. I just popped it off right here. You got to get your hands up under here and do that. And there's one more hose hidden right here. Uh, once you lift this, uh, plant them up a little bit, you can get your pliers in here release this clamp and twist this until it breaks free from the rust and there's one plug here that you gotta disconnect in it'll come right out and there it is and here is a plug there you got a plug right here well actually it's an extension that actually goes into this guy here so there's uh, a couple of sensors here once you get those out uh, you're good to go and you can see the complexity of this so this part here does take a little patience. So if you get into a bind, my advice is to walk away and come back. If you have someone to help you, then you're okay. But there's a look at that back there, how it's kind of set up. And there's the wiring harness there. Just take your time here. Luckily, I haven't really broken anything. Oh, we'll have to replace some clap clips and, uh, and let's see what else. There was something else here. Oh, this hose that, that I had to cut. So other than that, uh, this hose didn't look like it was very good shape anyway. It's kind of rotten there. It's kind of soft. So, and there is a look at the top of it. Probably didn't have to unhook this, but uh, it's kind of hard to tell because you got just a maze of hoses under there. Nissan did not want to cut any corners. They wanted to make sure this engine stayed cool everywhere. They got hoses all, all over the place. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get these little brackets off here. These hold the fan on. These are little eight millimeter nuts. There's one. And like I said, I sprayed oil on a lot of this stuff and it really helps it to break loose, especially these little nuts and stuff. So we'll get this out of the way. Okay, on the back of this shroud, we've got two little 10 millimeter bolts we gotta take out. There's one here and one right here we gotta take out. And our shroud is loose. So that is off to a good start there. All right, now the next thing you gotta do on the bottom here, uh, once you push this uh, piece of plastic back, this shroud a little bit, there is a little clip. That's uh, a secondary piece that's on here. And what you gotta do, you gotta put your fingers right about here. There's a tab right there, and there's a tab right there. It's a little tight getting your hand down in here. Let me back out there, sorry about that. Right here, push on those tabs, and this will release this piece here you see. And now we can just go ahead and pull this shroud up out of here, like this. I like that. That's a sort of an ingenious way to do it. I wish all car manufacturers would do that. And we'll grab the secondary piece, which is down here, somewhere. There we go. And there it is. You can see there is those clips. It's kind of, there's only two. You kind of got to push on it right there. And it kind of goes like this. It sits on there like that. So, so that was pretty easy to do. So we got that out of the way. And now we got to go ahead and take our fan off. If you have a set of these ratchets, and let me tell you what, I made a video on these I bought about a year ago. These have been wonderful. Paid about uh, $30 for them. And they don't skip. They go all the way from 8 all the way up to 17. There's a 15, 13, 15. You gotta watch some manufacturers will skip these. Especially some name brand parts stores, I won't say. But anyway, there are four bolts we have to take off. There are little eight millimeters. I've got three of them off. I've got one more to go, and we'll take this fan off. I typically leave this belt on because it holds this solid here. It doesn't let this turn while you're breaking these bolts loose. But like I said, it came off pretty easy. Just make sure you have one of these. It makes it a lot faster. All right, I'll tell you what, if my hands were any bigger, I'd have problems. And there is the last one. And make sure you put all four of them in a little baggie and label them so you can find them later. All right, so let's go ahead and get this off. I'm going to have to 
slightly pulled off wiggle a little bit and there it is not very big kind of small check this make sure it's okay if it has resistance on it then you're good to go if it turns really easy it probably needs to be replaced so we'll put this off the side and my baggie has been labeled so i know where my nuts are all right so we're ready to take this radiator out we unhooked our transmission line which is right there just pops right off and there's one right there now I didn't take the bottom radiator hose off because on the bottom of this radiator, the petcock is, uh, I could not turn it. I didn't want to take a chance of breaking it. I'd rather work with it when it's off. So I just unhooked the hose right here. And there's a little antifreeze in there, but not a whole lot. And that's it. And we're ready to go ahead and lift this up. So I'm gonna do this with, with one hand. Three, two, one. Let's see if we can get this out of here. There we go. And the bottom of this uh, support, I know it's gonna be rusted because they all do that. And here is the radiator. We'll set it over here just for now. And here is the pet pack right there. And you can see, I'll deal with it later. I could not break it free to get the fluid out, but there wasn't a whole lot of fluid there. And you can see I got my buckets under there and really didn't lose a whole lot. The reason I pulled the radiator out, and you probably don't have to, but I pulled it out just because I want to get my impact, electric impact wrench in there, gun, whatever, and get this uh, big bolt out on the crank. Just a lot easier. I'm cheating, I know, but you can do it with a cheetah bar. But I just wanted to go ahead and uh, break it loose first before I pull the uh, pulley off and all that. So we got all this extra room here, and here's what I was saying at the bottom of the supporter here. You can see it's pretty well rusted out. I'll have to make another one and stick in here. No big deal. There's where one of the holes is for the supports and the other one's supposed to be right there but other than that everything else on this um xterra is in really good shape it's the only place which is kind of weird so that's where all the salt and mud and stuff gets up there and rusts in the front of this all right we're working on our belts and i'm not sure why we have smurf vision here with my camera something weird going on but anyway there are two belts here on the front and you got a smaller belt down there for the alternator make sure the one for the power steering that you put a little tag on it because it's almost the same size as your air conditioning and your serpentine and power and your other belt down here so make sure you uh kind of mark the one that has power steering on it so you don't get confused for the alternator uh basically you uh loosen that screw up there and uh loosen that alternator up and slide that belt off i might have to put some oil in there and do that and that's basically how that alternator belt comes off so that is pretty straightforward all right so off comes our belt now that bolt there that i told you a few seconds ago about you gotta turn that quite a bit to get that uh, released and move that alternator enough to get this belt off but there it is and that is off now right here is our thermostat cooling thermostat let's see if i can get the light just right for you Right there, there are three bolts. Go ahead and take those out because there's a clamp right there. And as you can see, mine was so rusted, I couldn't get it. And hopefully yours won't be that way. So uh, I'm just gonna take the whole unit off as one piece. And there is a bolt right here. These are all 12 millimeter. So uh, let's see if I can get this loose. I may have to take a second hand here and pop this off. All right, so I got a screwdriver there and I've I think I've got it separated there a little bit. A little bit more, there we go. Okay, I think you can kind of see it there. You just pull back, take the screwdriver out and go ahead and pull this off. And it's a good time to put a new thermostat in this, which is what I'm gonna be doing. And there it is, there's the housing for that. And you see that clamp, I just couldn't get it off no matter what, it, actually I twisted it off, so. And uh, here are the three bolts. These are 12 millimeter bolts that hold that on. So put these in a little baggie and put it together so you won't be confused when you put it back together. And now we'll go ahead and take our bracket off, all 12 millimeter bolts and nuts. And there that is. Check your pulley. Bearing seems to be pretty good. And we've got this label so we know where everything goes. So uh, that's done. And also a side note that I almost forgot to tell you, in order to loosen this pulley up on the back here, there is a bolt that you have to turn. And what this does, it adjusts this pulley here. It lets it go up and down and relieves the tension on that belt. So when you take it off, uh, it makes it pretty easy to do. All right, so after removing that bracket, I went on ahead and removed all these clips here from the uh, fuel injectors and stuff. 
I uh, just kind of push this back out of the way for now. You could probably just kind of snake it up here. Maybe stick it in there with a bungee cord. And also get you some cloths and put these in your uh, intake here. So nothing falls down there because there's a lot of plastic here that's going to break, especially these uh, little clips like this. Um, I can replace these later. They go in the fuel injectors, but uh, just uh, so you know, this was actually pretty easy to do. And you really got to push on these little clips here to get them off. Actually, I uh, used a uh, pair of snips just to kind of help me there. Once you push them in, they release. So we got that wiring harness out of the way. All right, let's go ahead and get our cross breather off here. And these are just little eight millimeter bolts. There's one right there and there's one right there. Got it off and see how this comes off there. Just one piece. Interesting, but I still don't know what that wire is. If anybody knows, let me know. Kind of an interesting thing, but it's, it's in there. I'm going to leave it. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is go ahead and get that crank off down there. And what we're going to do, we're going to end the video here because I don't want these videos to get too long. Part 2 will be coming up here in about 30 seconds. So if you like the video so far, you like how it's going, and does this help you out, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Hey, if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. We all have our own opinions, right? So uh, stay tuned for Part 2 coming up here in about 20 seconds. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you shortly.